Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. I'm a brilliant intellectual. As am I. The two of us are sick of dealing with troglodytes, and so we moved into a bomb shelter so we wouldn't catch the stupid. Now we pass our intelligence on by debunking YouTube videos. We are the, the debunkers. We are in a new dawn of gender and sex complexity. Really? Sex got more complex? When did that happen? Who's to blame? I think what he means is our sexual behavior has gotten worse, and so the rationalizations we need to come up with in order to justify it has gotten more complex. Where those who don't fit into a simple binary are meant to be seen with humanity. Ah, yes. Those people who don't fit into the gender binary, as opposed to those who do. That sets up an interesting... Uh, dichotomy. It wasn't always like this, people. As recently as, let's say, the 1990s, early 2000s, people were making shitty reductive jokes about the subject. <laughs> Nothing tells you you're about to laugh like a comedian who just apologized for a joke. <laughs> oh, wow. They actually laughed. What can I say? The joke rhymed. <laughs> shitty and reductive jokes are kind of my brand. <laughs> but as we know from history, any moment of progressive visibility will be met with a vicious backlash. It's almost like progressive ideas are insane and wildly unpopular until the culture is reshaped by bullying and brainwashing. There are two genders. There are two genders and everyone knows it. Ain't but two genders. <laughs> yes, such a horrible backlash. People reaffirming the thing that they believe after you tried to force something new onto them. I'm surprised you survived. <laughs> that last guy sounded like it's an emergency and we're running out of genders. Why are you making fun of the way this African-American man speaks? What's funny about that to you, John? Making more jokes to apologize for? I guess that's what comedy is now. What's the deal with that thing I said ten years ago? Everyone! There ain't but two genders! Doing an impression of a black man? Not very funny, if you ask me. Haven't they been through enough? I don't want to have to start rationing genders. The point is clear. The human race is defined by a simple binary, a black and white understanding. Why does he keep bringing race into this? There are men and there are women. Yes. And never the twain shall meet. Trump is an alpha male. Well, okay, yes. There are obviously men who are more man than other. Oh no, this is where we do the whole, there's variation within the category, therefore the category doesn't exist thing. Men, but that's an aberration. Beta, gamma. Okay. There's an entire Greek alphabet, a continuum of masculinity, but that doesn't mean cuck, pajama boy, soy boy. Girly man. <laughs> Yep, that's what we're doing here, great. John, a sink is different from a toilet, but toilets come in all shapes and sizes, you say. Indeed they do, but these variations are no excuse for you to take a shit in the sink. Tell me, John, do any of these men play a different or unique role in the sexual act because of their place on this spectrum? Or are there still only two fundamental roles? The one who impregnates and the one who can become pregnant. And before you hit me with the, eh, some men are infertile, or some people can't get someone pregnant, can't get anyone pregnant. Yes, okay, but a man who's not fertile is not now capable of becoming pregnant the way a woman is. He's just, he's not able to do the man thing. That doesn't mean he's no longer a man and doesn't fit into that category. It just means he can't do it as well. There's something wrong with his body. To suggest that strips him of his manhood is ridiculously offensive. Bigot boy. I hope the children are out of the room. <laughs> Clearly, masculinity appears to be on a, a dimmer, not an on-off switch, but ladies are different. I was a big tomboy. These purple-haired, angry freaks. <laughs> Rabid feminist. Cat lady. High rolling bimbos. Pretty girly girl. Every single time this topic comes up, the 
not all men are equally masculine, and not all women are equally feminine argument is made in an attempt to invalidate the gender binary. But variation within a category doesn't invalidate the category. Less masculine men aren't any more able to get pregnant the way women are, and less feminine women aren't any more able to inseminate the way men can, which is the entire basis of the category. And for those who don't identify with either category, it's not as if some new role in the sexual act is created for them. What a cruise line buffet of the gradients in American gender expression. Turns out there's a lot of non-binary shit happening between the binaries. Ah, when this conversation comes up, I find it difficult to pick out exactly where to start explaining why what someone just said was wrong. Firstly, gender identity doesn't exist. It's a phony phrase which was coined by Dr. John Money, a pedophile and child sex abuser who gave an infant a sex change and created pornographic images of him and his brother as they grew up. The phrase creates a false separation between the role one plays in the sexual act, either as the male or female, and their identity, when the two are ultimately inseparable. It reduces the role a person plays in society as a man or woman to a subjective preference based on their own wishes and internal perception of themselves, rather than the concrete reality of their body and how it interacts with the world. Using this tortured language allows him to attempt to disguise his argument as having some level of sophistication or substance, when in reality it's a complete non sequitur. At bottom, what he's saying is, we shouldn't categorize people based on the role they play in sexual reproduction, because everyone has different personality traits. Speaking of different personality traits, John has the unfortunate trait of having no idea what he's talking about. But things could be different if he had ground news. Are you sick and tired of being unloved and bad at debunking things? Ground news can solve one of those problems. That's because Ground News is the world's first news comparison platform. It allows you to sort through the news and see how the left is reporting on things as opposed to the right, making you a fact-checking whiz. It won't make you less ugly, though. Not unless beauty is defined as knowing who's funding the news you're reading, how often they get the facts right, and what their biases are. It's not. No one would ever define beauty that way. You'll definitely want to check out the Blind Spot feature. It's an extremely useful tool that shows you specific stories that have have gone underreported by the left or right. Like the story of how a physician assistant sued Michigan's health system for firing her because she wouldn't use medically incorrect pronouns or make referrals for gender transition drugs. Literally zero left-wing outlets are reporting on it. If you scroll down a little further, you can see each of the news outlets that have reported on the story as well as each of the source's headlines and their political bias rating. You'll never be as brilliant as we are. But you can be less like Jon Stewart than you were yesterday. To try Ground News for free or subscribe to get access to all of the features you see here and support a small team of independent media outsiders working to make the media more transparent, go to ground.news slash freedom tunes. That's ground.news slash freedom, T-O-O-N-S. Now back to the debunking. But that hasn't stopped the traditionalists. Apparently, believing what everyone in the world believed five years ago and what 99% of the world still believes today makes you a traditionalist. From deploying their newest weapon in the culture war arsenal. We're deploying new weapons? The obvious gotcha question. A gotcha, huh? He must be about to show us a real slippery unfair question. The real basic question, what is a woman? Asking what a woman is, is a gotcha question now? What does a question even have to do to qualify as a gotcha? And also, how is that a new tactic? What's a woman? Stop it with your gotcha questions. Do you remember when Sarah Palin was asked if she reads books and she called that a gotcha question? Because this is way more embarrassing than that. Do you consider any of these to be gotcha questions? If so, you should probably keep that to yourself. I promise you'll be less embarrassed this way. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? For all of recorded history, people have known what a woman is. Correct. If you couldn't demonstrate that you knew what a woman was just 20 years ago, you would be considered profoundly mentally disabled. Yes! All of recorded history! 
We're gonna scream what he just said like a crazy person, and that's going to make us correct. It was simple! Until like a year ago, the answer to what is a woman has always been the same. It's a, a woman is a deformity that occurred in the ordinary course of nature. I'm sorry, that's, that's Aristotle. I apologize. That's. Oh, wow. Look, Aristotle said what people who believe in evolution say about literally everything that exists. But I guess mutation is a nicer word than deformity? Not really. Though, probably on the same level of insensitivity. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant a woman is a person who has no legal existence once married. That's, I'm sorry, that's... That's not a definition. It's a law. John, what's the definition of automobile? Uh, well, in some places, you, you can't, you're not allowed to drive more than 55 miles an hour. In some places, you can't go more than 35 miles an hour. So, who, who even knows what a car is? That's early American coverture law. That's, that's not right. No, the, uh, throughout history, it's not a gotcha question. A woman is 30 shekels. Once again, that's not a definition and not even intended to be one. Embarrassing. He set out to unearth definitions of womanhood throughout history that conflict with one another, and he couldn't manage to find three. Thanks for making our argument for us. We have Aristotle's description of women, a centuries-old law about marriage, and a passage from Leviticus about the financial value of a woman in a specific context. None of these are definitions, and none of them refute the definition of woman as adult human female. And regardless of whether we would agree with the people writing these statements about how women should be treated, one thing is for certain. All of them could tell us what a woman is. And John, you can't. I wonder why that is. We clearly have so many varying ideas about all of this, all across time and culture. And yet, this understanding that women are people whose reproductive anatomy is ordered towards pregnancy is definitive in virtually every single culture except seahorses. Almost like there's an objective reality to all of this that Jon Stewart refuses to see. And until he can, he's going to keep regurgitating tired left-wing talking points until we can be certain that his arguments will remain as tiring as his jokes. We're waiting on our apology.